Hi again, I'm Ashley Lambert. I'm a speech pathologist and clinical development director for Speech5. And I'm here with Donna, and we're doing a follow-up session. It's been a couple weeks since we did that initial evaluation, and we're just gonna do another calibration and check in and see how everything's going. Thanks again, Donna, for being here. Thanks for having me again. So, we don't have your Speech5 in right now, but how's it been going? It's great. Everybody who sees me, I, in fact, I do my little magic trick where I take it off and put it back in, and everybody <laughs> says they can. it's just automatic. My voice gets louder. And to me, it still feels the same. I mean, I can always hear me, but it's, it's been really great. Great. Have you, I know our goal was for you to be heard in group situations with increased background sound. How's that been going? Have you been able to test it out? I went out to dinner over the weekend with a group of friends, and they could hear me. Awesome. Even the one who's hard of hearing could hear me, so that was great. Good, good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Well, let's go ahead and do another calibration. Um, as far as the volume, do you feel like you're at a level where uh, this is working great for you, or do you need it tweaked up or down? What are you thinking? It seems fine to me, but I, I, don't, I haven't had it up and down to know the difference. When I'm actually talking about, sorry, your, your voice volume, do you feel like you're able to be heard now, or do you need to be a little bit louder, or are people now saying you're too loud? No, nobody's telling me I'm too loud. <laughs> I'm just there hearing me, so I guess I must be appropriate. Nobody's, right. nobody's leaning in to try and hear me, so. So we'll get started. I'm going to start the session, and I can actually download information and see how you've been doing. So let's go ahead and do another calibration. We've already measured the microphone's 30 centimeters away. Go ahead and say ah and hold it for me. Uh, Perfect. Now I just, again, need um, a nice chunk of speech from you. We're coming up on Thanksgiving. <laughs> How, what are your plans for Thanksgiving? Well, Thanksgiving is, was always a big event in my father's family, the whole family. I have 41 first cousins, some of which I've never met. So it's a big family, and the, we get, all get together when I was a kid for Thanksgiving. So even though we don't have that kind of family now, you know, we have smaller families, there's still something special about Thanksgiving every year. Oh, fun. I'm going to stop you for just a second, and I'm going to put the speech five in your ear. It's already making sound, and you should, you're probably used to it by now. All right, so keep telling me. So do you do it at your house? We take turns, my brother and I. Um, once my parents got older, it was too much for them to do, and so they would do, take us out to brunch for Easter instead. But because Thanksgiving is a big deal to us, my brother and I take turns having family and whatever friends are loose for Thanksgiving, and we take turns at each other's, at our houses. And the whole family comes. I have two sons, their wives, my grandson, I'm the dogs, unfortunately. <laughs> Trying to get dinner ready in the kitchen is interesting with three dogs in there. Um, but my, we made two turkeys. We have a Cajun deep fried turkey, and we have the regular stuffed turkey that I always used to make with my dad. And it's just a time to, you know, you reflect. We always reflect about what's, who's gone and how, tell stories about them, and just tell about, talk about what our life's going on in our lives, because we're all busy. How fun. All right, I got the data I needed. So let's see how you're doing. So when we started, your sound pressure level was 64 decibels. A couple weeks ago, you were at 63. So you've gone up a decibel, which is, you know, plus or minus one is about normal. And we got you back up to 69 decibels. That's where you were last week as well. Okay. Or, sorry, two weeks ago. So what I would expect is as you continue to use the device and talk more and more and more, um, at about the four to six week mark, we see in the research that about 70% of people have an increase in their volume even without the speech vive on. So we're going to see a lot of that strength coming into your voice and we can continue to tweak it. Or if you feel like 
this is a great volume for you, you're being heard in group situations, you can just continue wearing it and let me know if you need anything. Okay. Okay. What would you think I should aim for as my final? You know, I don't like to pick a specific number because Everybody has different situations, just like you were talking about your husband with some hearing loss. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Selective or not. Um, it's more about how you're noticing others experiencing your communication. So with the report you're giving me of people aren't um, talking over you, you're being heard in group situations, you're not repeating yourself. And I'm being, I'm told I'm more clear that my... My diction is clearer. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with all those types of things, you might be at a great level for you. You sound lovely. Thank you. So what this lets us do now is we can look at some other aspects um, of your communication, your swallowing, and your thinking skills. Those are all other things that speech pathologists work on for people with Parkinson's. And this frees us up. We don't have to worry about using speech time to work on your volume and clarity. We can address other concerns you may have now or in the future. Well, great. Thank you. I love this. Good. I good. love being heard. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Well, thank you so much, Donna, for showing everyone how an initial calibration and a follow-up calibration goes. Sure. Glad to be here. So, as a speech pathologist, what Speech 5 lets me do is focus my plan of care on more than just increasing sound pressure level. I can address the cognitive changes that affect approximately 50% of people with Parkinson's and dysphagia, which is the leading cause of mortality for people with Parkinson's. I can get that safety net under my patients earlier and see them for more interventions rather than a single intervention. 